Hello everyone and welcome back once again to Utopia. Today I am coming to you with a video a bit from a different point of view. Today I am introducing some practice into the videos in its most minimal expression. Today we are talking about intravenous lines. Intravenous lines are one of the most irrelevant things when you consider medicine as a whole, especially for doctors, and yet they are the most necessary part of any treatment and they are an absolute must for almost every patient that comes to the hospital. Because of that, today we will be talking about them, how to make them, how to put them, some examples and some tips and tricks. And also we will talk a bit about why in Germany they are especially important to be learned by doctors. So for those of you that just want to see the technique and different tips and tricks about intravenous lines, you could skip ahead to this part of the video. And for those of you who want to work in Germany and want to know what's specific and special about Germany, then I would recommend you to stick around because Germany is very special when it comes to IV lines. So in almost every country in the world, putting IV lines is a nurse's job. It is not a doctor's job. Doctors do have to learn them when they are in the university. You have to put one or two to learn how it's done. But let's be honest, nurses do it all of the time and the doctor won't bother, won't learn it properly and most likely after a couple of years won't be able to put it if needed because he or she didn't practice. In Germany this concept is completely upside down. In Germany putting intravenous lines is a doctor's job, it's not a nurse's job. Nurses are allowed to put them but in order to put them they require a special certification that they are allowed to do them. It's like a Weiterbildung in German. Normally in a normal station you have only one nurse that puts intravenous lines and this nurse is called the Vigodienst, which is the nurse that has this special qualification and goes around the station and other stations exclusively taking blood and putting intravenous lines. If this nurse by any chance is not there that day or goes home at 2 p.m., 3 p.m., wherever is her time to go home or finds this concrete patient very difficult then every single other blood taking and intravenous line that needs to be put goes to the doctor. In my hospital, for example, the Vicodins goes home around 2-3 p.m. and after that the doctor that is there has to take the blood and has to put the intravenous lines for every patient that is already in the hospital and every patient that comes to the hospital, which is a lot. So in the everyday doctors spend at least one hour many of them many hours a day just taking blood and putting IV lines. That's why learning it if you want to come to Germany, it's an absolute must. It is such a must that if you don't want to give a bad impression, it would be great if you already knew how to make them well before you even start working. Because of this, I recommend everyone to do some practice time in Germany before starting to work as a doctor, some practicum or some hospitation. It helps in many different ways. First of all, you gain those practical skills that give such a good impression, such as putting intravenous lines, taking blood, and many other things, maybe doing ultrasounds and stuff like that. Secondly, you do get a grip of the culture. You get to understand how the system works, how people are, common expressions, things that you don't really learn in the books, which are part of the everyday of a doctor working and will help you start nicely. And third, of course, you do learn a bit more of the German language, which helps a lot. So doing a practice time before working is always a good idea and I recommend it very much. Now today, just like with every video, I will tell you my personal experience with intravenous lines, my mistakes and what you can learn from them. So let's get to it. When I was a medical student, fourth year approximately, we learned how to make intravenous lines. We didn't learn with patients, we learned watching a video. It is very ironic that I am making a video about how bad it is learning intravenous lines with a video. But anyway, later on I had the opportunity of making intravenous lines on real patients and actually learning how to do it, especially when I was rotating in emergencies. But me being as stupid as I was back then, I took the easy route which is not really learning it, not really being proactive and telling the nurses to teach me how to do it and I never really 
did them on a real patient. The theory, I did it very nicely. I did it on puppets, but I never really did it on a patient. And I moved on with my studies. And during the sixth year, I came the practice semester and I decided to do it in Germany because I believe it was a great idea to already start getting in the flow of learning German, German style, German system. And so I introduced myself as the new practicant and they said, well, nice to meet you. Um, here are some test tubes and here are some needles. Go ahead and take blood to every patient in the station now. As you can imagine, the first impression I gave wasn't the best. I was a soon to become doctor in Germany who wanted to work in Germany, who couldn't make a simple IV line during my sixth year. It's not a good thing. Luckily, I was already there and for the following two months, every single day, I took blood and I put the intravenous lines that needed to be put. The doctors and the residents around there were glad I was doing that for them. I was taking a job and uh, a responsibility of their shoulders so they would have more time to do other things and I got to learn how to do it very well. Now, fast forward two years after that moment, I was already a doctor and then I did practice all over in different hospitals in Germany and in Switzerland and I did my Fachspracheprüfung, I passed, I got my approbation and eventually it comes my first day working as a resident in anesthesia. First patient comes without any intravenous lines for his or her operation, whatever that was. And the Oberst tells me to go and put in the intravenous line so we can do the anesthesia to this patient. Well, it's not a problem whatsoever. I do it nicely because I know how to do it. I at least don't give a bad impression and we move on to the next thing. So anyway, I hope you find some value in my experience. I definitely am glad I did this practical in Germany before starting to work as a resident. That way, the bad impression I needed to give, I gave it as a practicant, not as an assistance arst. And I, again, recommend all of you to, to do it like that, sooner better than later. <laughs> and that being said, I think this is enough talking about the sad reality of doctors putting intravenous lines and spending hours doing so. Let's get to the fun part. Let's talk about intravenous lines. Let's talk about how to make them. Let's explain them a little bit. So this is our good friend, the intravenous catheter. Some people call it Vigo in Germany or Zugang or Vranule or just Nadel. But this is the one you would put in someone else's peripheral veins. This one is to take blood. It's called a butterfly. All of them are from the brand Brown. There are other brands, but this is the one we have in my hospital. They come in different sizes and different colors for different needs that you may have. The smallest one is the, bl is the blue one, which is the 22G. The bigger the G, the smaller the intravenous catheter. There is a smaller one, which is used for babies and very small toddlers which is yellow color, I believe, but I have never seen it or used it. The ones we have normally for adult patients and children in general is starting from the blue and becoming bigger. So you have the 22G, which is the blue one, then the pink one, 20, green, 18, white is a 17, and the orange is a 14. Differences between them is not only the length, but also the width. If you were to put one on a patient that is very unstable and requires a lot of liquids and transfusions and other things, you would not put a blue one because it's very tiny compared to someone to other people's veins. And through this very tiny catheter, very few amount of fluids can go at the same time. Well, if you were to use an orange, for example, you would be able to let the fluids fall much, much quicker. As you can see, not only is it longer, but the catheter inside is also much, much thicker. A catheter like this could go easier on bigger veins, veins and therefore 
you could transfuse blood or liquids much much faster as you can see the catheter has some main parts first of all you have the needle which is inside and the catheter which has the plastic tube normally when it comes to making the intravenous line you would go in the vein once you are in the vein you would get blood coming back through it and you would see it accumulating here when that happens technically you could go a bit further forward pull a bit the needle back so that you wouldn't harm the vein anymore and then you could pull forward and as you pull forward you could also retract the needle the idea is that with the needle you go through the skin once you meet and once you meet the blood you don't need a needle anymore because you are already inside the vein so you retract the needle and then you go automatically inside there is a very cool video from Ambos that I saw today that explains it very well and I recommend you all to see it I will put it in the description so that you see how it's done with a very nice animation they have over there and so anyway even though there are many videos that explain how to do it I will sort of show it to you myself like I said I will not put it on myself but I will show you the steps on how it would be done luckily for you I have very nice veins and it will be shown very clearly normally uh, the easiest vein that you would see at any time would be the elbow I think it's clear um, also there are some nice veins that sometimes you may not see because of hairs this is the so-called anesthesiologist vein because it's for some reason only the anesthesiologist would actually go for it also on the side of the hand it's very comfortable the intravenous line because if you put it here or here when a person is sleeping um, they might break them with the movement but here it's very safe as you can see if you were to put one here you could put an you could put a pink one or maybe a blue one but an orange one would already be too big for such a vein so you have to put the catheters based on what kind of veins the patient has here would the orange pass easily so anyway first of all you stop the venous flow with this this would be called in germany a stauschlauch and once the blood has already accumulated you would take some disinfection metal some spray of alcohol and you would clean the part you would go in with a needle of course in my case it's not very difficult to find a vein in other patients you might not see them but you may, may be able to feel them with the fingers once you have found it you want to go in approximately 30 degrees in the direction of the blood flow never against it when you meet blood you will see some blood coming in this camera in the back once that happens you retract a bit the, the needle and with the catheter not being able to do any more harm then you would just go forward once you have done that you don't need the blood to stay there anymore you can just open here blood will go upwards and you could just press in here remove the needle completely and connect this to a system of uh, saline for example if you don't have a system for a short time you can use the back of the catheter of the needle to close it and so it would stay like this and at the end you want to fixate it with this special fixation you can use anything actually this is the one we have at my hospital which is nothing special but I guess since I are, since I have it I might as well just use it now very important don't get this one wrong because all of the people who start doing them puts them 
in the wrong way. Normally you wouldn't see the catheter, it would be inside of the vein and you put this part like this. But better, because you would have two hands to do it. And at the end, in this one you would write the date just to know when it has been done and you close it. Now this is going to hurt. And by the way, the needle that you pull out has a special security system that prevents it from hurting you. Also very important, if you cannot connect it to a system and you want to put the cap to close it, this will be full with blood and you could not just close it because, well, the blood in there would clot and then you cannot use the catheter anymore. So ideally, you would use one of these. This is some sterile sodium chloride infusion, some saline, that you could press, open it, and then you could give some saline, and then press again, take it out, and finally close. So in the system you would only have sodium chloride and there would be no risk for a clotting inside of the catheter. Now let me take care of this mess. So anyway, that is everything for today. I hope you liked the video. If you have any question, whatever it is, just feel free to ask. There is no stupid question, only stupid people that don't ask. Uh, any question is welcome, both when it comes to the practical side of putting in Travinius line as well as theoretical questions when it comes to Germany. Why is the German system like this or anything that may come to your mind that I may have missed, just feel free to write me. That being said, I wish you all to be happy, healthy, and see you next time.